Okay, with all of the tablet videos I've been doing lately on my channel, you'd probably think that I've gone buck wild for tablets. I mean, I have the HP touchpad here. I have an Android Honeycomb tablet, the Motorola Zoom here. I have the Apple iPad 2 here. The three major platforms right here in front of you. But that's not really the case. Tablets are new and exciting and fun to work with. You're more intimate with your programs and your information than ever before because you're actually interacting with them with touch. But once all of that coolness kind of cools down and wears off, you kind of realize you hit a wall a lot of the times when you're using a tablet. Obviously, tablets are in their infancy. I mean, they've been around for over a decade, but in a popular form, they've only been around for a couple of years. So they're in their infancy and they're going to be here for a long time. But you don't get the functionality out of tablets that you do with a high-powered netbook or a regular laptop or obviously a desktop computer. There are a lot of the times when I'm using one of these devices and if it's in the case of the Apple iPad, you're always going in a program and out of a program and in a program and out of a program and actually getting stuff done on this tablet is kind of a chore and things take longer with it. Things get a little bit better with the Android tablet here. You have more options. You have more things that you can do. The multitasking is better on this device than it is on the Apple iPad 2. But still, I end up hitting a wall and I realize to myself there are things that I need to get done and I should be doing it on higher powered hardware. Then you get to the HP touchpad over here with WebOS. The multitasking on it is second to none as far as tablets are concerned and it makes the actual experience of using it better, but you still hit a wall. It's a slower device. You're not going to get the things done that you want to get done. Steve Jobs compares computers to trucks and tablets to cars. I compare computers to cars and tablets to bicycles. On a bike you can still get from point A to point B, but it's slower and you don't have all the amenities like air conditioning and a radio and a GPS and all those things. So tablets are great, tablets are fun, just like bike riding is great, bike riding is fun. But they're just not there yet. So the purpose of this video is to create the perfect tablet. Now obviously in reality this can't happen. I mean it could happen if the powers that be made it happen, but chances are it's never going to happen. But I'm just going to express to you what I think the perfect tablet would be. Let's start off with the form factor. Now the Apple iPad 2 has a great build quality. It's nice, it's solid, you know that it's a, it's a well-made device. So I would start there. I would say I want a tablet with the build quality of the Apple iPad 2, but I'd want the size and weight of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. Now obviously I don't have a Samsung Galaxy Tab in front of you here, but through the magic of editing, I will show you one right now. The Samsung Galaxy Tab is actually thinner than the thinnest Apple iPad, the Apple iPad 2. The Apple iPad is 8.8 .8 millimeters in thickness. The Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 is 8.6 millimeters thick, so it's ever so slightly thinner than the Apple iPad 2. It's also lighter. The Samsung Galaxy Tab is 595 grams, whereas the lightest Apple iPad 2 is 601 grams. If you've been following my channel, you know my preference is the lighter, the better, the thinner, the better. Because when you actually hold these tablets, you're going to be holding them for a long time, and they're not heavy, none of them are heavy, but you're going to realize you're holding it after you're holding it for 10, 15, 20 minutes, half hour, an hour, whatever. You're going to realize you're holding it and you're not going to want to hold it anymore. So the lighter the better, the thinner the better. So the perfect tablet has the build quality of the Apple iPad 2 and the size and dimensions of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Now since we're on the topic of tablets I don't have in front of you here, we're going to continue with that and go with the Asus EEE Pad Transformer. The Asus Transformer has the best form factor of any tablet on the market today. I would definitely own one if I didn't already own the Motorola Zoom. 
Now the reason I say that is because the Asus Transformer actually has a detachable keyboard option that you can put on it. An actual keyboard that latches into the Asus Transformer and you can use it as a netbook. To me that's the future of tablets and every tablet should have that option. Because there's certain things that can be accomplished through touch easily. But there are other things that you definitely need a keyboard for. And not only that, but it also works as a built-in stand and also a built-in case, a built-in screen protector. So for those reasons alone, I think the Asus Transformer is superior in form factor to any tablet on the market today. So definitely the perfect tablet would have that option as well. Now, keeping in line with the way the tablet looks still, the perfect tablet would not have buttons. Now, obviously you need a power button and probably a volume rocker, but that's it. No more. None of these home buttons here, okay? You got a home button on the Apple iPad 2, you have a home button on the HP touchpad. No, get rid of them. You don't need them. Android has these virtual buttons here. That's all you need to accomplish anything you have on your operating system. So no buttons. I can't tell you how many times I accidentally pressed this home button while I was in the middle of something on the Apple iPad 2 and it brings me back to the home screen. Very annoying. I haven't had that problem on the HP touchpad even though it does have a home button as well, but it's probably because the button is elongated and more difficult to press accidentally. So definitely no buttons on the front, just a power button and maybe a volume rocker. Okay, the next thing are cameras. Now, a lot of people don't find any need for cameras on tablets necessarily. The only thing they want is maybe a front-facing camera for video chat. All three of these tablets have it. I think that the perfect tablet should definitely have a front-facing camera. And why not have a rear-facing camera as well? Sure, you're not going to use it as much as you would on, say, maybe your mobile phone, but it's nice to have that option to have a camera on the back of your tablet. And while we're on that topic, the camera should be at least 2 megapixels on the front-facing camera and at least 5 megapixels on the rear-facing camera. And since we're making the perfect tablet here, the rear camera should also have a dual LED flash. The tablet should also have stereo speakers. And as far as I've seen so far, the best placement on a tablet is on the side. None of the stuff on the back or mono speakers. We want stereo speakers and put them on the side. The next thing is bezel size. On the HP touchpad, you get a decent size bezel. On the Apple iPad 2, pretty much the same size bezel over there. I like a good size bezel. The Motorola Zoom, the bezel is a little bit thin and you end up touching the screen maybe where you don't want to touch it and pressing things you might not want to touch. So I don't want a huge bezel, but a good size bezel is a good thing. And that's another thing the Asus Transformer has. Okay, that pretty much does it for what's on the outside of the tablets. Let's go to what's on the inside of the tablets. Right now, all three of these tablets have dual core processors in them. Quad core processors are right around the corner. They're going to be coming later this year in 2011. The perfect tablet right now, since it's at arm's reach, it's right around the corner. The perfect tablet would have a quad core processor in it. Okay, now that we've covered the hardware pretty much, let's move on to the software. Now the first thing I want to cover is I like Android. I like Android a lot, but I don't like skins on Android. The perfect tablet would be stock. It would not have any skins on it because skins slow down the device, slow down new OS updates. I'm not a big fan of skins and I think that different manufacturers can differentiate their products by making proprietary apps that go on their devices. And that's the way they should be differentiating their product, not by skinning the OS. So no skins on the perfect tablet. Like it or not, if you want to experience the internet, you need Flash. I'm not a big fan of surfing on the Apple iPad 2 on Safari, looking at my YouTube page, and then thinking, oh, I'd like to look up a video, and then realizing, oh, no, I can't do it within Safari. I have to actually get out of Safari and use the YouTube app. 
Not convenient, not cool. The perfect tablet should have flash. Like it or not, if you want the entire internet, you need flash on your device. The HP touchpad has it, Android tablets have it, every tablet on the market has flash. The Blackberry Playbook has it. The only one that doesn't is the Apple iPad 2. Now obviously if you're using a tablet, you want to use the touch interface as much as possible. And you want to use programs that were written specifically for that touch interface. You can surf the web on these devices, but that's not the best experience you're going to get out of a tablet. So the perfect tablet would have the best of all the touch-based apps out there. So the perfect tablet would have a mixture of the Android market and the Apple App Store. The best of all of the apps from both stores merged into one. Obviously, the best tablet, the perfect tablet, would have that. I'm a fan of Chrome. I'm a big fan of using Chrome, the web browser. I have all my bookmarks there. It's a fast browser, and I really enjoy using it. So the perfect tablet would have a full Chrome browser on it. It would have the tab browsing, the bookmarks, the multitasking ability, the full Chrome web browser with extensions and everything. The perfect tablet would have that integrated into it. Now the perfect tablet would have to be useful, intuitive, functional, and easy to use. So that's why the perfect tablet would have the user interface of WebOS. With this card system, it's very easy to organize your workflow, very easy to organize what you want to do, and the multitasking of this device as well. So the perfect tablet would have the user interface, this card system here, and the multitasking ability of web OS. So what do you think? How would you make the perfect tablet? How would you Frankenstein a tablet together to make the perfect user interface, the perfect form factor for you? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Now are tablets the next big thing in computing? Are they going to replace your desktop and laptop? Or are they just the current big thing? The current new cool device? Personally, I think tablets are going to be here for a long time to come, but I don't think they're the next big thing. I don't think they're the, necessarily the future of computing. They're part of the future, but I don't think they're the future of computing. In my opinion, the future of computing is right here. The Motorola Atrix phone. Now, when I say that, I don't necessarily mean that this particular phone is going to be the future of computing. But I think the concept behind this phone is... The way I see it, the future is going to be you're going to have a high-powered device in your pocket at all times, which will be your cell phone. And that cell phone is going to plug into other devices. I mean, we're already going to see quad-core mobile processors at the end of this year, 2011. We're going to have desktop-quality computing in the palm of our hands very, very shortly. So say it's the reason that your main computer is going to be your phone, but you plug that phone into different form factors. Actually, Asus is coming out with a tablet-phone combination that you actually have a phone that you plug into a tablet. So you can use it as a phone, or you can use it as the brains behind your tablet. That concept, to me, is the future of computing. You're going to have your high-powered computing brain, basically, in the palm of your hand, in, in your pocket, which is going to be your mobile phone. And then what you're going to do is you're going to plug that into a tablet. You're going to plug that into a laptop. You're going to plug that into your home entertainment system. You're going to plug that into a dock that connects to a large monitor and separate keyboard. To me, that's the future of computing. So what do you think? Put your questions, comments down below. How do you see the future? What would be the perfect tablet for you? So that pretty much does it for this video. I will see you guys next time.